Chapter 1 of the Book of Galatians. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Aaron Holtstrand. The Book of Galatians from the Darby Bible. Translated by John Nelson Darby. Paul, Apostle not from men nor through man but through jesus christ and god the father who raised him up from among the dead and all the brethren with me to the assemblies of galatia grace to you and peace from god the father and our lord jesus christ who gave himself for our sins so that he should deliver us out of the present evil world according to the will of our god and father to whom be glory to the ages of ages amen i wonder that ye thus quickly change from him that called you in christ's grace to a different gospel which is not another one but there are some that trouble you and desire to pervert the glad tidings of the christ but if even we or an angel out of heaven announce as glad tidings to you anything besides what we have announced as glad tidings to you let him be accursed. As we have said before, now also again I say, if any one announce to you as glad tidings anything besides what ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now seek to satisfy men or God, or do I seek to please men? If I yet pleased men, I were not Christ's bondsman. But I let you know, brethren, as to the glad tidings which were announced by me, that they are not according to man. For neither did I receive them from man, neither was I taught them, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard what was my conversation formerly in Judaism, that I excessively persecuted the assembly of God, and ravaged it, and advanced in Judaism beyond many my contemporaries, in my nation being exceedingly zealous of the doctrines of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart even from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son in me, that I may announce him as glad tidings among the nations, immediately I did not take counsel with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia, and again returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to make acquaintance with Peter, and I remained with him fifteen days. But I saw none other of the apostles, unless James, the brother of the Lord. Now what I write to you, behold, before God, I do not lie. Then I came into the regions of Syria and of Cilicia, but I was unknown personally to the assemblies of Judea, which are in Christ. Only they were hearing that he who persecuted us formerly now announces the glad tidings of the faith which formerly he ravaged, and they glorified God in me. End of chapter 1 Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 2 of the Book of Galatians Translated by John Nelson Darby This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 2 Then, after a lapse of fourteen years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus also with me, and I went up according to Revelation and I laid before them the glad tidings which I preach among the nations, but privately, to those conspicuous among them, lest in any way I ran or had run in vain. But neither was Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, compelled to be circumcised. And it was on account of the false brethren brought in surreptitiously, who came in surreptitiously, to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, 
that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we yielded in subjection, not even for an hour, that the truth of the glad tidings might remain with you. But from those who were conspicuous as being somewhat, whatsoever they were, it makes no difference to me. God does not accept man's person. For to me those who were conspicuous communicated nothing. But on the contrary, seeing that the glad tidings of the uncircumcision were confided to me, even as to Peter, that of the circumcision, for he that wrought in Peter for the apostleship of the circumcision wrought also in me towards the Gentiles. And recognizing the grace given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were conspicuous as being pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go to the nations, and they to the circumcision. Only that we should remember the poor, which same thing also I was diligent to do. But when Peter came to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be condemned. For before that certain came from James, he ate with those of the nations. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing those of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the same dissembling part with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away, too, by their dissimulation. But when I saw that they do not walk straightforwardly according to the truth of the glad tidings, I said to Peter before all, If thou, being a Jew, livest as the nations, and not as the Jews, how dost thou compel the nations to Judaize? We, Jews by nature, and not sinners of the nations, but knowing that a man is not justified on the principle of works of law, nor but by the faith of Jesus Christ. We also have believed on Christ Jesus, that we might be justified on the principle of the faith of Christ, and not of works of law. Because on the principle of works of law no flesh shall be justified. Now, if in seeking to be justified in Christ we also have been found sinners, then is Christ minister of sin? Far be the thought. For if the things I have thrown down, these I build again, I constitute myself a transgressor. For I, through law, have died to law, that I may live to God. I am crucified with Christ, and no longer live. I, but Christ, lives in me. But in that I now live in flesh, I live by faith, the faith of the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness is by law, then Christ has died for nothing. End of chapter 2 Recording by Aaron Haltstrand Chapter 3 of the Book of Galatians Translated by John Nelson Darby This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Aaron Haltstrand Chapter 3 O senseless Galatians, who has bewitched you? To whom, as before your very eyes, Jesus Christ has been portrayed, crucified among you? This only I wish to learn of you. Have you received the Spirit on the principle of works of law, or of the report of faith? Are ye so senseless? Having begun in spirit, are ye going to be made perfect in flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if indeed also in vain? He, therefore, who ministers to you the Spirit, and works miracles among you, is it on the principle of works of law, or of the report of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Know then that they that are on the principle of faith, these are Abraham's sons. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations, on the principle of faith, 
announced beforehand the glad tidings to Abraham. In thee all the nations shall be blessed, so that they who are on the principle of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are on the principle of works of law are under curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that by law no one is justified with God is evident, because the just shall live on the principle of faith. But the law is not on the principle of faith. But he that shall have done these things shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us out of the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one hanged upon a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the nations in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak according to man. Even man's confirmed covenant no one sets aside, or adds other dispositions to. But to Abraham were the promises addressed, and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now I say this, a covenant confirmed beforehand by God, the law, which took place four hundred and thirty years after, does not annul so as to make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance be on the principle of law, it is no longer on the principle of promise. But God gave it in grace to Abraham by promise. Why then the law? It was added for the sake of transgressions, until the seed came to whom the promise was made, ordained through angels in the hand of a mediator. But a mediator is not of one, but God is one. Is then the law against the promises of God? Far be the thought. For if a law had been given able to quicken, then indeed righteousness were on the principle of law. But the scripture has shut up all things under sin, that the promise on the principle of faith of Jesus Christ should be given to those that believe. But before faith came, we were guarded under law, shut up to faith, which was about to be revealed so that the law has been our tutor up to Christ, that we might be justified on the principle of faith. But faith, having come, we are no longer under a tutor, for ye are all God's sons by faith in Christ Jesus. For ye, as many as have been baptized unto Christ, have put on Christ. There is no Jew nor Greek, there is no bondsman nor freeman, there is no male and female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. But if ye are of Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, heirs according to promise. End of chapter 3 Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 4 of the Book of Galatians Translated by John Nelson Darby this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 4 Now I say, As long as the heir is a child, he differs nothing from a bondman, though he be lord of all, but he is under guardians and stewards until the period fixed by the father. So we also, when we were children, were held in bondage, under the principles of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, Come of woman, come under law, that he might redeem those under law, that we might receive sonship. But because ye are sons, God has sent out the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So thou art no longer bondsman, but son, but if son, heir also through God. But then indeed, not knowing God, 
ye were in bondage to those who by nature are not gods. But now, knowing God, but rather be known by God, how do ye turn again to the weak and beggarly principles to which ye desire to be again anew in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest indeed I have labored in vain as to you. Be as I am, for I also am as ye, brethren. I beseech you, ye have not at all wronged me. But ye know that in weakness of the flesh I announced the glad tidings to you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye did not slight nor reject with contempt. But ye received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What then was your blessedness? For I bear you witness that, if possible, plucking out your own eyes, you would have given them to me. So I have become your enemy in speaking the truth to you? They are not rightly zealous after you, but desire to shut you out from us, that ye may be zealous after them. But it is right to be zealous at all times in what is right, and not only when I am present with you. My children, of whom I again travail in birth, until Christ shall have been formed in you, and I should wish to be present with you now, and change my voice, for I am perplexed as to you. Tell me, ye who are desirous of being under law, do ye not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one of the maid servant and one of the free woman. But he that was of the maid servant was born according to flesh and he that was of the free woman through the promise. Which things have an allegorical sense? For these are two covenants, one from Mount Sinai, gendering to bondage, which is Hagar. For Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and corresponds to Jerusalem, which is now, for she is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break out and cry, thou that travailest not, because the children of the desolate are more numerous than those of her that has a husband. But ye, brethren, after the pattern of Isaac, are children of promise. But as then he that was born according to flesh persecuted him that was born according to spirit, so also it is now. But what says the scripture? Cast out the maidservant and her son, for the son of the maidservant shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not maidservants, children, but children of the free woman. End of chapter 4 Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 5 of the Book of Galatians, translated by John Nelson Darby. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Aaron Holtstrand. Chapter 5 Christ has set us free in freedom. Stand fast, therefore, and be not held again in a yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say to you, that if ye are circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. And I witness again to every man who is circumcised that he is debtor to do the whole law. Ye are deprived of all profit from the Christ as separated from him. As many as are justified by law, ye have fallen from grace. For we, by the Spirit, on the principle of faith, await the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, Neither circumcision has any force, nor uncircumcision, but faith working through love. Ye ran well, who has stopped you that ye should not obey the truth? The persuasibleness is not of him that calls you, 
a little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence as to you in the Lord, that ye will have no other mind, and he that is troubling you shall bear the guilt of it whosoever he may be. But I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why am I yet persecuted? Then the scandal of the cross has been done away. I would that they would even cut themselves off who throw you into confusion. For ye have been called to liberty, brethren. Only do not turn liberty into an opportunity to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, see that ye are not consumed one of another. But I say, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall no way fulfill flesh's lust. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these things are opposed one to the other, that ye should not do those things which ye desire. But if ye are led by the Spirit, ye are not under law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strifes, jealousies, angers, contentions, disputes, schools of opinion, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revels, and things like these. As to which I tell you beforehand, even as I also have said before, that they who do such things shall not inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, fidelity, meekness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. But they that are of the Christ have crucified the flesh with the passions and the lusts. If we live by the Spirit, let us walk also by the Spirit. Let us not become vainglorious, provoking one another, envying one another. End of chapter 5 Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 6 of the Book of Galatians Translated by John Nelson Darby this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Aaron Holtstrand Chapter 6 Brethren, if even a man be taken in some fault, ye who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thus fulfill the law of the Christ, for if any man reputes himself to be something, being nothing, he deceives himself. But let each prove his own work, and then he will have his boast in what belongs to himself alone, and not in what belongs to another, for each shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate to him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man shall sow, that also shall he reap. For he that sows to his own flesh shall reap corruption from the flesh. But he that sows to the Spirit, from the Spirit shall reap eternal life. But let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, if we do not faint, we shall reap. So then, as we have occasion, let us do good towards all and specially towards those of the household of faith. See how long a letter I have written to you with my own hand? As many as desire to have a fair appearance in the flesh, these compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted because of the cross of Christ. For neither do they that are circumcised themselves keep the law, but they wish you to be circumcised, 
that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me to boast, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world is crucified to me, and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither is circumcision anything, nor uncircumcision, but new creation. And as many as shall walk by this rule, peace upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. For the rest, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the brands of the Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. End of chapter 6 Recording by Aaron Hultstrand End of the Book of Galatians from the Darby Bible Translated by John Nelson Darby